Hello and welcome to what is actually week one of the Foot Weekly podcast in FC 25. Yeah, we've got Team of the Week 1 coming up this week and also access to the game for those playing the pre-order version or that 10-hour trial. So that's exciting. I have with me, I'm sure, two very excited guests, two very familiar guests. First of all, we have foot legend Air Japes. Hello. Hello, Ben. I would say my excitement level is currently, I suppose we're at like an eight. Okay. I think there's a mm-hmm. level of like, um, I, you know, I've, I've certainly been there, done that. You can teach an old dog new tricks, so I'm having to learn a few new things this year. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm mainly just like eager to just get in, like start screwing around. Like, let's move fast and break things. That's kind of my approach here. And I want to start breaking stuff because I have all this pent up FC mm. emotion that I have to let out. Uh, well, hopefully we'll get that cheeky early, early access again because uh, that was good. And we could share our thoughts on the podcast, which was nice. And of the types of access, early, early is by far my favorite. Yeah, very exciting indeed. And how are your excitement levels? Josh excels. Yeah, I, I, my excitement levels have gone from like a six and a half, seven to about a nine. So, uh, yeah. Ooh, um, is that because of what we're about oh, to talk about? Well? This, mm. I mean, pitch notes. I mean, it just, it's like they summed up every criticism we had of game modes last year mm. and went, do you know what? We'll take about 90% of that and apply it to this year. Yeah, which is really good. Really, really good to see, I think. Um, but we'll get into it. People can make their own decisions as we go through it. Uh, first of all, uh, the start of this, uh, I guess it's the content pitch note. They haven't said that specifically, but it is focused around actually mostly the rewards and changes they're making around that. But uh, I'll start by saying that they have confirmed that the web app will be the 19th of September, which is Thursday, but it could potentially be out on the 18th. Sometimes it does drop a bit early. Look out maybe the evening of the 18th UK time for that. Um, The companion app will come on the 20th, it seems, which is actually the same day as uh, the early access starts for pre-order and the 10-hour trial. And they're also saying that fans who are rejoining us from Foot24 will also get a little something extra with returning user rewards, which they're pleased to announce are back for foot 25. Um, so I guess, Josh, we talked about this a bit on the uh, previous How to Start episodes, it means they could be tradable and there could be some trading to be done on the web app, I guess. Yeah, one would hope that they are tradable. That the, the, the traditional ones were a 12 players pack with four gold, four silver, four bronzes. We'll have to just see how they go with that one, but so good that they're back. It It will make that first like 24 hours on the web app actually kind of worth spending time on because there'll be some coins sloshing around and some tradable players to to be buying. Yeah, there will be. And then we can move on to the next bit, preseason and Euro rewards. So preseason carryover rewards earned in FC24. Football Ultimate Team will be available in FC25 starting 10th of October 2024, which uh, people will be probably aware of. And also Euros fans who completed the European journey will also receive an untradable 82 plus times two player pack uh, for FC25 Ultimate Team. Also on the 10th of October, you must claim your European journey reward in FC24 by September 20th. Uh, all the carryover rewards need to be redeemed within one month by logging in to Ultimate Team in 25 with the same account. Right, that's that sort of date-related business done, and we can move into some of the really beefy stuff, which is mode reward changes. Right, so they're delivering some, what they're describing as major changes to the core modes within foot. And uh, what they've said, there are four key things that drove these changes. Unique mode identities. In recent years, the purpose behind some of our modes was beginning to converge. We think the changes we are making to how you play and how you'll be rewarded will help reestablish a new unique identity for each mode. So that was point number one. Point number two, play at your level. We want to ensure that fans are more consistently finding matches that provide the right level of competition. Reward elite play. This is one that was top of mind for Foot 24 too. On reflection, we think we got to a good spot with this one over the course of the year, but missed the mark for launch. We're making changes to improve this for the launch of FC 25. Connected rewards. This is point number four. It's important that rewards feel connected to what's happening in Foot. We'll be focused on delivering frequent updates to keep mode rewards relevant throughout the cycle. Anything on the sort of philosophy here that anyone wants to talk about before we go into the actual nitty gritty? 
Uh, the kind of unique mode identities. At the moment that 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 was read, uh, it, like you think about what we already knew coming into these pitch notes, stuff about friendlies being changed, the new kind of matchmaking system that they've got in friendlies, which we'll hear more about later, and how they clearly were driving towards that being the casual mode. And I think if you ask most people, the most casual game mode last year was Foot Champs qualifiers, which clearly isn't what they want to do. And that's point three, rewarding elite play. Mm. So I like it as a kind of you know, four points to improve upon. I think I could have maybe worded them slightly different to kind of get more of what they've actually done across. But it, 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 the play at your level thing is such an important part because that for kind of players who play the game an awful lot, it's different to what EA usually look at as playing at your level. You know, play at your level for for EA can be people who haven't picked up the game for three or four months and haven't played more than 100 games of like FIFA or FC in their entire lives. Whereas for us, you know, our level is, are you an 11 win or 14 win champs players? Which is why I think the rewarding elite play, most people are elite players, but rewarding the very, very best mm. is is definitely something I think that was missed last year. I think it got better. And I think they were absolutely right. Like the fact that they said that they wanted to do it for 24, but didn't get it right at the beginning of the game. They were like, I remember praising them quite a lot last year about how they improved rewards as the year went on. Mm. And that it became more and more worthwhile actually playing the game. The fact that they really are making a concerted effort to try and do that from the beginning this year mm. is really, really good. Yeah. And then in terms of something that is mentioned here, but perhaps isn't mentioned quite so much in the rest of it, they are going to be keeping rewards up to date throughout the cycle, which is super important because obviously, uh, you know, the value of things sort of inflates over time. So you do need to keep them updated, which they seem to be planning to do. Right. Let's get into foot champions. In FC25, we're positioning foot champions as the pinnacle of high stakes competitive foot matchups. And we want the rewards in champions and the accessibility of champions to reflect that. Last year, we think we made champions finals too accessible. As a result, many fans went on extended losing streaks and champs rewards didn't reach their potential. This year, champions will be more challenging, but it will be more rewarding for higher skilled fans. Before we get into this, controversial, but do we agree that it's too accessible? Is it a problem if champs is too accessible? I just, part of me, as you're reading that, I can hear the, like, <laughs> the section of people being like, what are you talking about? I could barely play champs last year, and now you're telling me <laughs> I'm never going to play champs. What is the point of that? That's so annoying, because that's the, where the rewards are. Like, I can, I can absolutely, yeah. like, feel people shouting into their headphones right now. I, I, I agree that people reading it that struggled in champs will have that feeling which is why I'm quite like, it's quite strange. I think how they've structured these pitch notes, I would have put rivals before champs because the changes there, which of course we'll get onto, I think do account for players not getting into champs or not getting good wins in champs. It does seem like they've improved mm. their ability to play the game at a competitive level over the course of a week. But obviously we'll move on to that. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously a tricky thing because we're not going to, talk about it just at the end of this and so it's worth bearing in mind I guess that different things fit together to make this uh, a cohesive thing so just bear that in mind uh, right so foot champs playoffs uh, this is meant to be your gateway into foot champions finals uh, they've said as a gateway into champions finals we're looking to reduce the role that playoffs plays each week in foot 25 we're lowering the number of games needed to qualify for finals from four out of 10 wins in foot 24 to three out of five wins in foot 25. Reducing the number of games will make each playoffs match feel more competitive with more on the line helping in two key ways. For players of a higher skill level, it will make the process of qualifying for finals faster. For players of a lower skill level, it will make playoffs a better reflection of your finals experience, ensuring that you'll only qualify for champs finals once you're ready to be competitive. However, with playoffs being harder compared to last year, you'll have 10 additional attempts each season to enter into playoffs, bringing the total seasonal entries to 18. And this translates to three a week. Uh, for some fans, playoffs was a popular arena each week 
to experiment with new teams and players. As we reflect on all our modes, we think that matchmaking changes announced for live foot friendlies will better meet this need in FC25. Uh, there's more on this a bit later. Right, playoffs. Uh, what are our uh, thoughts on that? Because I guess something I want to point out early on is that, yes, you have 18 playoffs entries. Josh, you do need to earn the points to go into playoffs in the first place so that's going to be a bit of a bottleneck probably depending on how many points you get i guess because it varies based on division yeah yeah I, I, and i think that's that's obviously the kind of asterisk here is that you know you could earn quite a lot of points to get into playoffs quite easily and quite quickly last year even in kind of divisions five six and seven it was still fairly quick to get up to the 1250 points needed I think, again, this is another reason why I would have put the rivals beforehand because of a change to rivals, which we'll talk about later, which makes actually earning the points for more entries into playoffs make more sense mm. uh, because you're going to be playing more games in rivals if you want the rewards. Yep. Uh, that's a bit of a spoiler. I do just want to uh, call out one of the greatest bits of politically written, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to butter something up as good whilst actually doing completely the opposite, which was we're lowering the number of games needed to qualify for finals from four to three. The bit that's important is there's five less games. Yeah. So actually you need to win 60% of your games and not 40% of your games. It's harder to qualify. It's not reducing the number of games needed to qualify in this in that way. Like it is, but it isn't. I, I will say though, it increases the like benefits of chance or like a diet. Yeah, in, absolutely. It, or it can, it can, it could also hurt you. Right. It, like mm. it's certainly the double edged sword, but theoretically you could get three easy ones right off the bat and away you go on the flip yep. side, you could get three really, really hard ones and lights out. So I, like generally a, a high level player myself, I'm like less games is wonderful. I do wonder though, it, because they're reducing the number of games, if they will make the rewards less good, or or if there are any rewards at all, because it's not really mentioned. Yeah, I don't think about that. Yeah. And and so therefore maybe it's just qualifying. There isn't really good rewards, and that it, we could see a situation like we did this year. A lot of people got to their four wins and and just left like they would give away the rest of the wins or they just end qualifiers now th there may be a situation where you can just end qualifiers at three wins and then you, you're into champs because they, they're clearly saying for higher skill players they want them to just get into champs quickly but i mean if you have got your three wins and there's no benefit for you going to five give your final two wins away because you're gonna have then mm more lower skilled players are going to get into champs if you do that. So yeah, it's it's going to be uh, interesting to see how the rewards are done on that because obviously they haven't mentioned it. And I, I do think that will make quite a big difference because as Jape says, that luck, you know, if, if you come up against two people who've qualified to give you two wins, now you only need to win one of three. That's suddenly a lot more doable for, for the lower skilled yeah, players. I mean, based on previously, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to go back into playoffs though, right? After you've qualified. So... I, I guess that is worth bearing in mind. But yeah, I do see what you're saying about that. Right, let's move into the final section. So the idea here is that it's the pinnacle of high stakes competition. The changes to playoffs will mean that the average skill of champs finals players will increase this year. With this increased level of competition, top finishes in champs finals will earn you significantly improved rewards compared to FC24. We'll also be looking to better differentiate the types of rewards you see in champions and rivals to help the modes feel more unique. As an example of the changes you can expect, below you can see the season one rewards for fans who achieve rank one in champs finals. It's not completely clear, but this does seem to be the rewards for one champs finals run. And just to do some spoilers about how many games there are going to be and all that kind of stuff, you're going to need to win 15 out of 50 matches to get this reward. So the reward is 200,000 coins, a tradable 85 plus times 10 pack, a tradable 84 times 10 pack, an untradable base icon pack, untradable 89 plus times 2 players pack, untradable 82 plus times 30 players pack, <laughs> 3 
tradable team of the week players. Uh, that is kind of why. Sorry, <laughs> you're just three tradable team of the week times three players pack. It's nine mm. tradable team of the weeks. I mean, Japes, you didn't need motivating to get to rank one particularly, but um, it looks like you're going to be rewarded oh. for, get, <laughs> for getting there too. Yeah, uh, that's stressful, man. Mm. I... I I mean, I love that. I'm excited about those rewards. It feels like, I mean, that's beefy. That is beefy, beefy, beefy. If we ever had a question about whether or not it was possible to have like, what, like 2.5 million coins in a month or something like through <laughs> gameplay alone, it feels like that's going to be possible. Like, Just let's get that out of the way. The only, the only hint, hint of a concern I have here, say you've got, you can't play mm. for a weekend at a high level. It feels like early, early, you're going to be far behind. I'm sure that will level out over time because I, I think what'll be interesting to see is how long people stay with like like seventy, like largely majority gold teams still like gold rare, mm. right? It seems like icons are going to get introduced pretty quick and other promo cards and you're going to have lots of coins and that sort of stuff. And how long before people have like full special teams? I think that's going to kind of be the question for me. And then I, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, the, I'm like, this is, there's, there's never been more of a reason to, to like just play and not spend mm. for me ever. Like I look at these and I'm like, there used to be like question marks and rewards felt tough. I'm going to, I'm going to see some, I'm going to see some cards this year that I'm excited about. I like purely on volume. I should see something worth getting excited about. <laughs> yeah. And also the other thing you'll get James, uh, when we had a quick look at this before we started recording, I think we're actually more excited about it was some exclusive club customization options. You're going to be able to get the, club nickname Invincibles. I don't care about for that. For <laughs> rank one. And you're going to be able to get the celebration flex if you get ranks one to three. Mm. Yeah, I, I am so for. Like, I'm super yeah. hyped about the ability to have unique celebrations. Like, forget... If anything, maybe there's like less gritty. But when, when I score... And it's like a tight game or whatever. If I have a unique celebration, you best believe it's coming out. You got to <laughs> let them know that you might have, you, you don't belong here still. Yeah. It, it's just really cool. It's better than kits. It's better than the invincible. Like, that's fine. I, I don't want to like mock that because like people will hear that too. And like, eh, it's like cool. The celebrations. Let's do more of that. Let's do more of that. Yeah, no, I think it's good. And I should say this is the season one reward, so you'd expect there to be uh, different rewards, obviously, each season. And then it goes on to say, similar to playoffs, we're reducing the number of total matches by five, which will help raise the stakes of each match and reduce the amount of time needed to finish a champs run. Well, it actually depends, doesn't it? Because if less people quit, for example, uh, that could end up being pretty similar. We'll also be simplifying the point system to help you better track what you need to achieve each rank. Each win will earn you one point with no points awarded for a loss. So none of this four point nonsense. Uh, rank tiers in season one of FC25 will require the following. So rank one is 15 points. And so that's 15 wins. Rank two is 13 points. So that's 13 wins. Rank three is 11 points, so that's 11 wins. And then the next ranks are just one win lower. So there's a, a, a 10 win reward, a 9 win reward, an 8 win reward, a 7 win reward, a 6 win reward. And then we take a jump of two again down to a 4 win reward for rank 9 and a 2 win reward for rank 10. So Josh, this is something I know I've been banging on about for a long time, wanting less gaps between the ranks. So, you know, games mean more and there isn't just a thing where people just check out at a certain stage in champs, which tended to often be 11 wins. Uh, I think it's really positive and will hopefully kind of change the the mentality around champs, I guess. Yeah, like I, I, I think to kind of come at it from a maybe slightly different perspective to Japes as someone who 
was between 11 and 14 wins last year. Got my 16 wins once, but like that's kind of my level. The thing I'm most fascinated about with this is where am I going to sit? Like with a more difficult playoffs. I bet you fluctuate. Where, yeah, where, where, where do I sit in a, in a reward system that it, now every win counts? Like there's pressure on every game. You know, I'm I'm definitely not. Well, let's not. I, this might be my year, and I'm a 15 win player, but I'm most likely not going to get above 11 wins out of 15. So, well, interesting. And you say 11 wins as if that's 11 wins before. Yeah. And I think, you know, people might be thinking that, but obviously that's a lot harder to get because actually 11 wins in 24 would equate, forgetting the fact that maybe there's a high caliber of player in champs finals now, would equate to about what nine uh, wins, eight, eight nine wins, wins. yeah, eight, eight wins, yeah, something like that. And it, that may even be seven wins or six wins because of the caliber of player in finals. So, yeah, it, people are going to have to think about things quite differently to how they have done before. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what, what the community deems is acceptable in terms of your results, like, you know, <laughs> comp- compared to previous years. You know, maybe we can use the rank system to to kind of gauge that a little bit easier. You know, rank five and four is tends to be where people went, okay, you're okay, that was 11 and 14, I think, last, last year, or maybe that was 14 and 16. Maybe that will be where it is again, but I think it's just, I think it's exactly what Champs has needed. It's done what we said Champs needed, which was essentially, you know, there's a few differences in here, but a reward for every level, an actual reason to get an extra win. You know, if you've got to 11 wins and have three games left, kind of wasn't really any point trying to push for the 14. If you didn't think you could get there, the stress to do it. Now every game is important, but it's only 15 games. And so, you know, it should go a little bit quicker. I, I think it'll be more competitive. I think there'll be more rage. <laughs> I am interested to see the rewards in for lower ranks because mm. Japes is right. Those rank one, one rewards are ridiculous. But what does rank four look like? What does rank five look like? How big is that gap going to be? There is a flip side to this. Now that you need to go unbeaten to get rank one, if rank two rewards are significantly worse, I actually don't know how much of an effect those rank one rewards will have because it's going to be such a smaller pool of players. Yeah, and also you've got the fact that obviously the difference between rank two and rank one is two wins, mm. which is fairly significant. And obviously that 15 win threshold you have to reach, considering the quality of opponent is going to be higher potentially in champs finals and the fact that you could afford to lose a game in the old system in 24 and the fact that you still need to win a game at the very highest form possible in champs, same as last year, 15 form. That's 15 sort of wins, if you like. I guess it is definitely going to be tougher, and so it makes sense that the rewards are so good. And I imagine the rewards for rank two will still be pretty good, though, but you know, not close to that. Yeah, because yeah. that's still going to be pretty hard. I mean, you, you did have to win like four games at the max rank last year to get to rank one, so there it's maybe slightly yeah. easier, but I wonder if you know, with a reduction in games, they can maybe make matchmaking a little more precise because I think it was a bit too loose at times last year in champs. Yeah. So hopefully maybe they'll they'll be able to narrow that down and it, it will be quite difficult. But I also think with 20 tradable players at 84 plus rating, that's going to flood the market for both fodder. Like, so you've got to be careful now this year about fodder investments because I don't think we've had that level of tradable players available from like literally weekend one of champs. Assuming these rewards spread down the the tiers, right? Because otherwise the volume of players getting that is not going to be super But, high, it, right? but even if you say rank two is a tra- an 84 by 10 and an 83 by 10 tradable, yeah, and it's yeah. an 83 by 10, 82 by 10, do you know what I mean? Like there's going to be a decent volume of tradable players seemingly fairly early on in the game. Add into that an untradable base icon pack, an untradable 89 by two, like, straight away i mean that's that is a cr- like it's crazy levels of rewards for the first season so i think even if you aren't a champs player even if you're someone who looks at this and goes well i'm just never going to be able to play champs i imagine the cost price of like mid tier mid of the top tier players is not going to be quite as ridiculous as it has been because i think there there will probably be more on the market than there has been or at least more within the game untradeable and tradable than there has been in previous years yeah that's a good point let's take a break and we'll be back to talk about rivals rewards squad battles friendlies all that good stuff just after this hello listener an important announcement 
if you're playing FC25 and thinking it'd be nice to play Rush with some like-minded teammates, perhaps even some listeners of the podcast, perhaps even some hosts of the podcast, uh, then we've set up in the supporter Discord an area where you can matchmake or find others to play with in Rush. There's voice chats there for you to join. It's very easy to use. If you're a gold or icon supporter and are unsure how to join the Discord because you haven't done so already, it's pretty easy to do that as well. There is a link in the description of all the podcasts released through Patreon, which explains how to do that if you haven't done so already. If you're on the bonus podcast here, so not gold or icon, it's very easy to upgrade to if you fancy it. And of course, it's helping the podcast more and you're getting loads of perks in return too. And if you're not a supporter at all, then, you know, maybe consider joining on the gold or icon tier and you will, as I said, get access to the Discord, including that Rush matchmaking system and plenty more as well. So if that interests you, then do search Support Foot Weekly in your search engine. A huge thank you if you do consider doing that. It really does help the podcast. For now, though, let's jump back into this episode. Hello, welcome back after the break. Right, let's dive straight in with these Division Rivals rewards. The idea behind this is that it's your everyday destination for online competitive play. So it says, as you can see in the Foot Champ section, your Division in Rivals will play a key role in helping you qualify. They say that because of you know the accumulation of points needed to enter playoffs. Uh, back in August, Aslan covered a number of changes coming to Division Rivals in FC25. Uh, these included a point for draws, uh, checkpoints, relegation, and legacy placements. As a little reminder, if uh, you reached, I think it was Division 1, 2, and Elite, you'll be placed into Division 7 from the start. All of these changes are centered around helping you play at your level. Naturally, rewards are a big component of that equation too. With such a large fan base, it's tricky to get the balance right for everyone as we think about the right number of matches per tier fair um yeah fair as you can imagine there's a vastly different number of average matches played in the elite division versus division eight each season in fc25 we're increasing the number of wins required for weekly rewards from three to five for the regular reward and for the upgrade it's going from seven wins to 15 wins so a pretty huge jump there However, as mentioned in the deep dive previously, we're also moving from a wins system to a point system to ensure that draws count towards your progress each week. So it may be 14 wins and three draws to reach the 15 wins because you'll get a point for each of those draws. This change will allow us to substantially increase the value of rewards in rivals. As an example, below you can see the upgrade weekly reward for elite division rivals. So it's 75,000 foot coins, two tradable 85 plus player picks, pick one of four, untradable 75 gold rare players pack, tradable 50 gold rare players pack, tradable mega pack, two untradable 83 plus team of the week player packs. At the same time, as we are overhauling the rank requirements, we're going to streamline rivals reward options into one single option per tier in each division that will feature a balance of foot coin, tradable and untradable rewards. We want to focus our time on creating exciting rewards, not on trying to balance them across 33 different categories, which slowed down the number of rival rewards refreshes we could deliver in the past. Okay, so that's a big, significant change to the focus, I guess, Josh, on rivals in 25. Yeah, it's it's gone from that. Oh, I'll just like, oh, okay, shall I get my seven wins? Can I can I be bothered to get my seven wins? To like, it's it's the place to go to to really like rack your games up because fifteen wins is not going to be easy. Like you know, if you're in your correct division, you know it should be a kind of one one one, like one win, one draw, one loss every three games. So I mean, to get to forty five points, you're looking at like. 30 odd games, 36, 37 games, depending on how your draws and wins like kind of fall in those matches. So that's a lot of games. So to counter the mm. kind of reduction in champs, you know, from, from 30 games to 20 games now, there's been a big increase in, in rivals, but with the draws being actually worthwhile having now, you know, it's, it was interesting the way that they worded it from seven wins to 15 wins, I read that as 45 points because of what they then say with 14 wins and three draws. You know, it it then becomes a kind of 
it, it's somewhere to go and actually just play the game, which I think is what rivals always should have been. And they've bumped up seemingly the rewards to a decent level that makes it worthwhile doing. I'm slightly hesitant to say that's how it will go. I don't know that people necessarily want to play loads and loads of games in rivals. You know, champs is what gives you the best reward. So people who can play to a good level in champs will definitely do that. I'm not sure if it will capture those people in rivals. That's my only worry about it with it being increased. But I mean, like 125 rare gold players for just getting 15 wins in the elite division is pretty good. Again, depending on your pack luck. But yeah, I I like the streamlining of rewards into one tier. And again, from looking at what they've done with the Elite Division rewards, it seems like that's a good balance. They've both improved the rewards, but also spread it between tradable and coins and untradable. And if they can change the rewards more often, then we could definitely see, as they said, I think earlier, as the fourth of their four points right at the beginning, that the rewards can be connected to the promo that's happening a little bit more closely than it has been in, in, in the past. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's an interesting change. It's probably my, I'm, I'm least enthusiastic about this change. We'll have to see how it works out. And, you know, if rivals is a super sweaty place, try and get those points. I could see people not playing rivals and only playing friendlies, rush and champs. Um, but obviously, if you're struggling to qualify, you're going to need to be playing those rivals matches to to bump up the your points to then be able to qualify or at least try to qualify for champs. So it's it's an interesting change. I'm not sure it's perfect. Yeah, well, I, I sort of think Jake's maybe it is for those players who don't play champs. It gives them plenty of games to play and be rewarded for online without feeling like they're missing out too much. I mean, they're going to feel like they're missing out, Ben. Like, that's where we started with champs. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think it's that thing of like, you know, for players who are not getting into champs, as the cycle goes on, they'll still be getting probably the 15 wins in champs. Whereas if I'm playing champs, I'm probably not going to commit to getting 15 wins in rivals. So there will be a bit of equalization from that. But I agree that the sort of novelty and and prestige of champs, which ironically hasn't felt particularly novel or prestige over the last year, is going to mean people feel left out because they're not getting in there and the rewards will probably be good. But hopefully if they are good, even if you manage to get in and win some games, you're getting a decent reward and that's kind of an achievement. I think that's kind of how it should work, I guess. Um, But we can talk more about this in a second. So that's rivals. I want to move on to squad battles and then live foot friendlies, and we can talk about things. What about rush, Ben? Well, there actually isn't anything about rush. There's in no here. rush. There's no rush wards. Yeah, it's conspicuous in its absence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, they heard our talk about it, and we're just like, it's so fun. We don't need to give any rewards for this mode. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to insert this in at this point before you get on to the mm. the final like reward change. I, I think part of me believes that there was a well, my tinfoil hat here. Rush is super fun there's a concern that it's going to cannibalize some of the other modes mm. that are... And I, I think with the reward boost like this, maybe becomes less of a chance. Yeah, interesting point, which we will discuss in a sec. So, Squad Battles, your everyday destination for offline competitive play. To help make each match in Squad Battles feel more meaningful, we're reducing the number of matches that count towards your weekly rank from 32 to 14. So it isn't just about who plays the most, which I think is is quite an important point there. Of course, like in previous years, you'll have the ability to continue making progress on objectives and evolutions challenges after the 14 matches with additional opponent refreshes that won't count towards your weekly rank. Obviously, neither Japes and I are squad battles experts, but I know, Josh, you do commit to it early in the cycle. Uh, Are you pleased with this change from 32 to 14 games? Uh, I kind of get their point about it feeling a little bit like if you play more games, you just get a higher rank, and that doesn't really mean it's competitive at all. Yeah, uh, uh, the thing they haven't mentioned, which is the biggest issue in terms of the, the ranking system, or at least the very top of the ranking system in squad battles, is that it was just bots, like it was just hackers that that finished at the top of squad battles because like, I defy anybody to regularly win on ultimate, like in FC24. It was just impossible to do that on a regular basis and the points they were getting up at the top of the leaderboard was them doing that and that could only 
in my opinion, have been done through hacking. I hope that that's fixed. But in terms of like the general play, where for me it was as long as you got into elite rewards, like elite three rewards, that was a really good level of rewards for the time invested. Now, you know you've only got 14 games, which was kind of around what you needed to play at a good level to get into elite last year. So I think they've kind of nailed how many games they're bringing that down to. And for the more casual player, it's definitely a, a great change and links into the friendlies, which we'll get onto because it seems as though objectives and evolutions are going to be moved more into foot friendlies because I think they want those more player versus player rather than player versus computer. And so I, I, think it's a good change. It will definitely make Squad Battles rewards worth playing for in the early days. We don't have any information on the Squad Battles rewards, which leads me to think they're probably fairly similar. So they will be worth doing for two or three weeks and then we'll probably fall off again. And then on to life at Friendlies. The purpose here is your shared playground for squad experimentation. In Foot 25, we're changing to matchmaking based on form, similar to the system found in Champions. This new system will take into account your wins and losses across all life foot friendlies, excluding house rules, to find you a suitable opponent. This means your live friendlies matchmaking will no longer be linked to your rival's division. It's important for the long-term health of the community that newer or lower skilled players are finding good matchups as they play online for the first time. To reduce the potential for win form manipulation, only full match losses will count towards the way form is calculated. That means if a match ends before the full-time whistle is blown, the loss won't count towards your win form. This will help ensure a level playing field and that the whole community is able to find an appropriate match for their skill level. As a shared playground to experiment with different and unique squads, we'll be moving more objectives and evolution requirements into live foot friendlies to ensure you're consistently facing players trying to achieve the same goals. Right, well that is the entirety of the modes information that they've put into this. And I guess, let's just quickly cover the friendlies aspects, Josh. I guess a concern was that with this friendlies form system, it would be quite abusable. You could just quit out of a load of games to reduce your form. They're clearly preventing that from happening here, which I think is a, a positive and means that actually maybe this is going to be a nice, more casual place to play. I definitely think these are positive changes. The fact that you only get the loss if you stay in a game could make for some kind of frustrating matches where an opponent doesn't want to leave because they'll like just take the loss. You know, if you end up getting that three or four goal lead in the 60th minute, it's probably better for the opponent to just sit out the rest of the 30 minutes and take the loss. So that's that may be a perceived negative. I, I have a slight worry that whilst, again, they want to make it an easier place to play, it's always going to be a bit of a bell curve in terms of what's the easiest thing for most people. And if if it does if the matchmaking works as intended you're going to be coming up against very similar quality players to yourself mm. just like you would be in rivals or in champs so i don't know that that will necessarily make it a fun relaxed place to play what it will do though and this is what i hope they can really build towards with the objectives and evolutions that they mention is that everyone is using something different and unique and fun and that it is a little bit more relaxed because actually if you take a loss it'll mean your next game is easier which wasn't the case this year so i i, I do hope that, the, that there is maybe that it does work out how they're hoping it, it does but i can also see a situation especially if they don't reset that win loss level kind of regularly throughout the cycle I could definitely see it getting to a point where actually it's just as sweaty as it was this year. Mm. I just feel like at least they're trying. Yeah, oh, like, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, I mean, it's been not so perfect previously. And at least we're trying and time will tell and it remains to be seen. I'm, I'm curious, I don't think they say in here, but how many games it takes to hit top form? Mm-hmm. They haven't said that there is even a top form, actually. So yeah. It could be endless, theoretically. Which would be like... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm looking at this from like a high... Like, I don't... 
part of it is like I don't want to just play the dudes that I play in rivals all the time in friendlies either. Like, what does it does it yeah. reset? I mean, I, does I it reset it will, with yeah. each new friendly mode? No, the the systems across all live friendlies. The only one that's excluded is house rules. Oh, that's lame. All right, well, whatever. I do at least at least they have thought of a way to account for people just losing, you know, quitting out a draw twenty five times in a row to to try and get easier matches. At least they've thought of mm. a way to combat that, which is which is good. I just hope that the matchmaking is loose enough on this new system that you do still have a couple of easy games here or there. As I think we said a few times last year, like for the majority of players, a completely open matchmaking system would be fine. But there is that like lower 30 to 40% of the player pool that would have a worse experience because they'd be losing more often than they would be winning. So it can't be completely open. I just hope that it's loose enough that if you are a decent player, it's not like trying to get that win for the next rank in champs. Like that's what I hope that, and because that's what it became this year, I think. Mm. So uh, I was going to say, now we've actually heard the full extent of how all these modes are going to work. I guess we don't know too much about how Rush fits into it, but I guess it's worth bearing in mind that they're assuming people are going to play some Rush games too. So if you feel like there's a reduction in games overall, that might be because they'd imagine you'll be playing Rush, but I guess there are a lot more potential games to play in Rivals too, so that might also make up for it. Uh, how are we feeling about these changes overall? Uh, James, let's, let's start with you. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on them, both, I guess, from your perspective and just sort of the community in general? I mean, I am happy that the reward... Like, it's fun opening packs. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, like it's fun. This is this the change is like baseline for me. It's like, does this make it more fun or less fun? More fun for sure. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on. I think there are some considerations around, you know, specifically, I, I think it'll have theoretically, it should have market impacts and implications as well. There should be more high rated cards, so a higher supply on the market, however. They're going to be people with a lot more coins in general. So you might see a bigger price discrepancy between like good cards and truly elite cards, which might be concerning. Mm. But, you know, we'll have to, we'll just have to see. Yeah. Makes sense. Josh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, the caveat that you put in the question about Rush not being mentioned is interesting to me. It, it, it seems that from a few of the tweets today, that's going to be what they lead with on Wednesday. The first view of the gameplay is going to be a rush match, a 5v5 rush match or 4v4, but obviously, you know, five aside on the pitch. And so maybe we'll get more information from there. And when you then look at the rest of the modes, I think champs is a really good change, a necessary change that it will absolutely cut off a few people that, you know, struggle to qualify for champs or would qualify and only get a couple of wins in champs, you may now not be able to qualify. But when you do qualify, hopefully that should then be a big thing and like an actual achievement that feel like something you've worked towards and are now good enough to go in and get two, four or six wins. Like hopefully those lower ranks now, you know, the bottom three ranks this in the la in the current iteration of champs you could get by not winning a single game you just needed to quit out of enough games mm, and so yeah, it's now yeah. that the first rank is actually two wins those rewards are going to be better i think than people are expecting i, I obviously we're going to have to wait and see the breakdown of that to really make a judgment on it as i said rivals is the mode i'm most worried for i i don't know that people are going to bother with it to get to 15 wins. And it, it it may be the case that people play up to a level that they're happy with and then stick there to get their 15 wins to get those rewards. Because, you know, if that only takes you 20 games because you're three divisions lower than you should be, that's probably a reasonable sacrifice than going up to the division you want to be in and trying to kind of like grind out 15 wins that's gonna have to be suck it and see I, I feel like a lot of people may drop rivals 
Squad battles, I think, is a good change. Reducing the half times last year, now reducing the number of games each week to 14. Puts an emphasis on the skill of learning how to beat the AI and score the most points. I think it's a positive change. And then friendlies. I'm I'm really happy they've changed friendlies. It absolutely needed change in. I'm really glad they're moving more objectives and evolutions there because, I mean, like I kept saying last year, I want a reason to build different teams and hopefully now pushing us into foot friendlies where people will be using different teams. That's We're going to get more of those. Obviously doing evolutions in, in friendlies was something we did once, maybe twice last year. So really glad that's been introduced. So overall, I think it's, Positive changes. I think it's changes people have been asking for. I don't think there's perfect solutions to a lot of the problems like we were mentioning in the matchmaking in, in Life at Friendlies, but it is a real concerted effort. And I think I think there was a worry that with game modes not being changed this year, obviously they'd introduced Rush as a, a brand new game mode and they changed the point system in Rivals, but the, the game modes did feel a little stagnant. I think this is kind of changing them up enough to the point where people will be interested in going back in and playing them. There is another mode not mentioned. I mean, not mentioned at all at any point. Foot draft. Give us some love, please. Well, I thought you were going to say moments. Oh, God. oh yeah. Sorry, I forgot moments <laughs> even existed. Is Teams Objective still there as well? Uh, yeah, so... I think uh, that's gone. No, I, 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 yeah, RIP moments and foot draft, I suppose. But I'm, I'm sure they'll still be there, but just clearly not good enough to make these pitch notes. Yeah, and I wanted to say myself, you know, first of all, you know, champs going from 40 games to 15 games over the course of a few years. Uh, utter woke nonsense, <laughs> as, uh, as I would say. But it is really uh, good to see uh, the focus on the competitive aspect of champs. Like it's something that I've said for a while. I, I think that champs has totally lost its place in the ultimate team ecosystem. It's quite obvious as someone who's around creators who, who do stuff around the game that there's just a real lack of interest in improving your ability at the game because there wasn't a feeling that actually, if I do improve, I'm necessarily going to be rewarded once I have improved. Um, I know that's not the only reason for improving, but you know, frankly, as someone myself who actually just wants to enjoy gameplay by having fun and the wins are nice, actually this will motivate me to get more wins because you know now there will be rewards there for doing that. And I think that's something that, although for some people I appreciate is not going to be great because they might be missing out on champs. And I think as time goes on, people get used to the gameplay and you've obviously got multiple entries into uh, playoffs. I think people who are, you know, regular listeners to this podcast who've been in champs before will get in there, but I imagine there will be some pain and disappointment as a result. But, you know, pain and disappointment and then the redemption are all part of a good cathartic gaming experience, to be honest. And you kind of need those elements to make it weighty. And we'll see whether this actually comes to pass. But overall, I'm quite positive about it. So, We'll see how it actually goes once we get into the cycle. But let's move on to the final elements of this pitch note, some of which we've covered before. So I'll just skim over them. There's the evolutions changes we've talked about quite a bit. Um, you basically have caps or max limits, um, so they don't have to be so strict with requirements. Uh, Evo players will get upgraded to a set threshold rather than them just not being eligible, which is obviously really good. Uh, then we've got new heroes and icons, talked about them a lot. And we also have the average transfer market price, which is something you can flick to with the right stick and it gives you a rough idea of what the player's worth. It's not super accurate. So I imagine for a lot of people, just be using a database site or you'll press the compare option. Uh, multiple versions of players in packs. Uh, this is interesting. Though. I think they're basically just clarifying that when they put multiple versions of the same player in packs, the gold, silver, bronze isn't still in there. So they are making an improvement, if you like, or it's a positive thing to have them in there. So I guess that's worth saying. And then uh, we also have a bit on club membership. So in FC25, we're introducing a new program called Club Membership that will reward you for playing consecutive titles from launch. In FC25, club members will get a series of exciting rewards throughout the course of FC25, including Ultimate Team uh, Role++ Plus Plus Evolution, uh, two club member kits, two club member XL TIFOs, three club member TIFOs, and three foot crests. There are some other rewards for clubs and career too. And then we move on to FC Season 1 Total Rush. So Total Rush is going to be the theme for the first season and for the season pass, which as we know can be purchased with coins or FC points. And we don't know the price of that pass yet. I'm sure we'll find out soon. 
And um, we have talked about it before, so I don't know how much more we need to talk about it. But is there anything else, Josh, you've seen from this that is kind of worth thinking about? Uh, the world tour element aside, because we'll get into that in a second. I, I think the Total Rush campaign celebrating dream picks from famous faces and players will be able to progress towards the first Total Rush quartet. Just interesting words and looking forward to seeing what that is because obviously Rush is awesome. I think the most interesting part is the fact that you'll be able to get all of the rewards for a game mode only by playing that game mode. So you're never forced to play something else Obviously, people will because that'll be you'll be able to get XP quicker and and as you say, get up the levels quicker. And obviously, Foot will have the their rewards mainly in the higher higher echelons. So, I think that's quite an interesting way to learn how the the, the season pass works. No information on the paid season pass. Hmm. Interesting. I'd have thought this was where they'd introduce it, but maybe they're just gonna have it in game, not draw too much attention to it, and. Yeah. I do think it's interesting that they've removed SP from champ squad battles and rivals. Mm. That was a fairly big chunk of your progress through the season pass was from playing in champ squad battles and rivals or, or champs and rivals for most people. So hopefully that means more objectives, more ways to gain SP within ultimate team. And that can only be a good thing. Maybe that will all come through rush, but hopefully it's, it's spread out amongst all the different modes. Yeah, you would hope so. And the one thing they've said clearly here is that there's going to be more campaign integration with the season rewards, which I guess is good because sometimes the like season pass felt like a bit separate almost, which made it less fun. Uh, and then they also mentioned actually uh, the world tour. So the world tour will start in Spain to encourage team building around a theme. Each season will feature a unique regional experience. Players are going to be able to build their world tour squad by completing objectives and earning rewards. Also, squad foundation players will now provide plus two league chemistry points instead of the standard plus one, which is good because they've kind of fallen behind a bit and we're just being used as kind of fodder or potential future evolution options, I guess. Uh, although maybe when you evolve them, they won't retain that bonus, which is worth noting. Um, but yeah, the World Tour thing is interesting. I guess it goes back to people wanting to build around themes throughout the cycle. Um, I, I, you remember, James, when we did, had the icon swaps, right? And you could build a team from a different league, and uh, that was a, a real thing. I don't know whether I'm wrong to think this, but is it a bit of a shame if you don't know in advance? Like, they've just said Spain is the next one. But if we don't know what the next one is, is that annoying? Because then you can't save those players and you know, look to build around that? I don't know. I, I think they're like they've added the duplicate thing. They've also, as a whole, I feel like they're increasing the number of... They're trying to get you to collect cards in some ways, I think. And so, like, I think that's another nod in that direction. Mm. Right. I think we're ready to wrap up this episode. So let's tie this up. Thank you very much to our guests here, who we'll hear from again, I'm sure, very soon as we get extremely close to FC25. Thank you very much, Josh. It's been good to have you. Yeah, I can't wait to get started. I'm very jealous that you two are going to get some some little backhander so that you can get on the game early. But, you know, Thursday's the day. Yeah, we'll, ha we'll have to see about that. Um, always a little bit up in the air. But anyway, yes, Japes, thank you very much as well. We'll be back, potentially with Josh, hopefully, to fill uh, while well, the support is in about uh, our early experience playing FC25. So, yeah, good to have you, Japes, as always. Cheers. A reminder, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc., you can subscribe to get these podcasts into your podcast feed. If you're listening on YouTube, do drop a like, leave a comment. It definitely helps out. Uh, you can subscribe there too, of course. And if you'd like to become a supporter, then just search Support for Weekly. There is a free trial. And thank you very much to all you supporters supporting the podcast, keeping it going, including those icon patrons. Dave B, Hugh J, Darren W, Alistair M, Don P, Rob P, Jeff B, Damon H, Tom B, Adam G, Neil P, Alex M, Jake S, Dan W, Roger D, Lee A, Andrew C, Nishant, Waterman, Dylan H, Adam R, Rob L, Brendan W, Michael K, David G, Jimmy K, Cherry Drank, John D, Michael B, Aditya S, and Joshua K. 
Plus a special thanks to Luke M, Dave B, Hugh J, Tom M, Darren W and Pato Foot for advice and production assistance. Before I leave you, just one more thing to add though. Ultimate Team is a bit like life really. It has its many ups and downs. If you're having a few more downs than ups in real life in these more difficult times, then please don't feel that you're alone or need to struggle on without taking action. If you go to thecalmzone.net, there's loads of resources, advice, support, or even just a friendly chat for anyone who needs it. If it sounds like it could help you, then head over to thecalmzone.net. And for now, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next podcast.